Parliament says we have. So please give him a, a nice warm welcome. Any stragglers? Ah, hi. <laughs> um, so, in, in an effort to connect with you, uh, I don't know if you could all just kindly place your mind or your hand uh, and just uh, be in the room, in the space with me. I think it's a special time for us being together and I'd like to make it easy for us that we're all in the same space and time. So, um, well done, Paul. Um, I represent the association, the Radionic Association, and we are guardians of the, the teaching. And uh, these wonderful inventions, let's call them, have been made over time. Um, we've got some from America with um, a foot plate, probably like a car. Ooh, drive it. <laughs> um, from uh, Ruth, Ruth Drown, who is a famous American... Um, practitioner. Unfortunately, something awful happened and she was put in prison um, for many years and um, all her equipment was destroyed because the American Food and Drug Administration and the authorities. Um, there were other practitioners who in the early days were challenged in, in famous um, court hearings um, in the UK, the De La War family, um, George and his wife, they were challenged but um, they, they were okay. They, they won their case. And the person who was challenging them was ridiculed to some extent. Um, but it did cause them a lot of financial ruin because they had to defend it and they didn't have the money, although they won the case. Um, sorry, yeah, please. I'm just wondering if I missed something. Is it, uh -huh. you, you've explained something, but I don't know what it is. Oh, right. Um, radionics um, is... Is it virus? Like... Um, well... I'll stick to radionics because okay. I'm not sure, I don't know enough about bioresonance to say. Okay, because I don't know um, anything about Yeah. Um, we have an association here in the UK and uh, there are some sister or fellow associations abroad. In uh, Italy there's a very good one. Um, we're quite sort of above board but some of them are a bit more discreet, a bit more subtle because there is a risk associated with making equipment and then having to show people how to use it. And that's what I'm explaining at the moment, is the fact that in the past, in historically, lots of people who have made these sort of machines Which for healing. Oh, right, okay. Yes. Um, sorry, yes. Okay, right, thank you. you Very good. Um, have uh, been exposed to the dangers that for their career, which makes it very difficult to, to carry on and, 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 ha and have widespread acceptance. So... Um, they're all very different and it's gone through phases. Um, the early phases were to think about doing analysis and then later on in America, Ruth Drown started to do treatments at a distance. Um, I think you all know, you probably know about radionics. No, um, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> oh, that is, okay, um, that, that surprises me, yep, yep. Um, okay, so a patient, uh, a willing patient, a participating patient, might um, hear from someone that they can get health um, improvements and they might supply a piece of uh, hair or blood or a nail and then they would send it to a trained practitioner and the practitioner would then start to work on their uh, outer fields and their energy centres with a view to trying to establish where there were imbalances. So you might have a series of charts. And we use the dowsing facility. Um, then a series of questions. And then the intuition that you all have and experience through your dowsing practice to find the answers. So in, in searching out the answers, you really don't know what's going to come. They might not be the right answers, but you need to be grounded. I think you all know how you need to prepare yourselves when you're working. And that very same thing happens. Um, in fact, just reading this, this morning, you know, the, you can put various shields around your uh, workspace, your equipment, uh, over the sample, um, the witness, we call it, which is the person 
that we're trying to... Um, uh, and I will explain, I'm not a practitioner. Although I've been on the, um, the courses as part of the council, the Radionic Association, um, I don't actually do this in my day-to-day -day, um, existence. So, so it's, it's about transmitting frequencies through the airways? Um, I wouldn't like to define it so simply, um, but uh, if people were giving a treatment and they chose to set, uh, use a rate, which might be set on a dial, they may have got that rate from some cards from someone like Malcolm Ray, who you were talking about earlier, and um, the God, <laughs> and all the rates are charted. So, um, again, I'm not an expert on the rates, but you can look through and you can see rates for almost everything. Um, I think what I possibly need to do is, is explain to you where we are and the development, because there aren't many developments that I'm aware of. There are a few, go a few people making machines. Um, we've got some really exciting members who go their own way and then they occasionally come and give talks. But um, those days have been difficult because we haven't had a community feeling um, the last few years. So, and, and before that, um, we run a school in, um, in Winchester and um, it's been very difficult. We can't do that now. So we're just trying to figure out what's going to be happening next. So uh, it's quite nice that we're with you because I feel that there's a reconnect. Um, yeah, it, it's nice to say you can help people, but not many people alone. Or if you think about working with this and you're in a space in your workshop, um, <clears throat> there is a limit to how much healing can get done volume wise it's a bit scary to think that this might become mainstream and someone might invent a technology that can broadcast um, but if you look back in the history lots of those things have already been done yeah. you know there were people set with, with rooms of equipment even Paul mentioned he's got 15 machines he bought um, but, and you could broadcast to many people and the, the broadcast uh, past methods have, have changed. There are various things here. Uh, Malcolm Ray, there's a potentizer. Um, the amount of rates that we've got now, we've got rates for... Yes? How does the machine generate a rate? So you've doused the, what, from the sample, you've doused what the rate is for what they need for a treatment or whatever. And then what happens? Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an expert. I'm going to ask Bogdan to uh, just explain the use of, of one of the machines a little bit later. Or, or would you like to come up and do it now? Yeah, because he's a practitioner. Um. Come up, Bogdan, come up. Yeah, it'll be much easier for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> This, is, this, is, this part is to just uh, answer the question. Uh, okay, sorry. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah. Um, so, radionics basically started nearly 100 years ago in America, and it was basically um, done by uh, medical people, medical doctors, who um, in those days uh, used electricity, which was a new thing as uh, back, back then. Um, and they found that the uh, electric currents would stimulate different parts of the body in a different way to, uh, to help various diseases and illnesses. <clears throat> what this, uh, this was Abrams, Dr. Abrams, and uh, he um, was intuitive as well as, uh, as a scientist. And he used a, a percussion system on the, the person's abdomen and different parts of the abdomen he found had a different tone or a different vibration, which uh, then he, uh, knowing what the person was suffering from, put together the, um, what the vibrations would, um, what vibrations were, um, um, specific to a particular disease or illness. Um, he then, um, for so, some reason or other, um, was experimenting with um, 
what they called a surrogate person, a, a healthy person, and um, I don't know how how he got to from that stage to to the next stage, um, and he percussed a healthy person to analyze the ill person, right? <laughs> um, these people, when he was treating them with the different frequencies, which are actual electrical frequencies and electrical currents, um, were sort of instruments similar to these, where they had knobs and dials, and they were rear, they're rear stats. Right? So, um, so each different frequency had a different number of um, dials, and they're numbered no, normally 0 to 10. Um, these would then be called rates in, the, in more modern times, right? And they would be used in, in the more modern non-electrical instruments. But anyway, so um, then if um, the next level was where the action was done at a distance, remotely, using people's uh, blood samples in those days. Um, Nowadays, they use hair samples or nail clipping or um, just a uh, photograph and name and address, date of birth. Um, but um, Abrams was also um, uh, uh, taken uh, to, uh, to task by the, uh, uh, the authorities, the medical establishment, because he was treating people, uh, a lot of it uh, cancer patients as well. Which, which is not a good thing to do in America, to treat someone without uh, medicine. Um, then there was a um, lady called Ruth Drown, which Guy mentioned. Uh, she took it to another level, um, bringing in the uh, Kabbalah and more mental, mental states. Um, and uh, from there, it was brought over here through the um, De La Wars. Uh, Malcolm Ray and Bruce Copen and various other um, British um, uh, radionic practitioners, and slowly the the, the instruments they co they call machines. Some call them machines, but they don't do work. They, I call them instruments. They they were designed in different ways for different specific um, uh, reasons to um, either um, healing analyzing healing or for um, uh, uh, harmonizing geopathic stress at places, uh, measuring the spirit of place at, at different um, places. So that's, that's the background. So then it became um, more, uh, um, less, uh, the less scientific in terms of the normal um, electronics and electrical stuff, but now you even got computerized radionic instruments where people just tap in something and, and hope to get some, uh, well, well, get results. Can I just remind you that uh, for those that don't know about radionics, that these instruments that I bought, a couple or whatever, uh, that they not only use electricity, but they can use little uh, batteries as a source, an energy source, and also magnets. Well, yeah, well then, you know, there's magnet therapy, there's crystal therapy, a lot of them have, uh, yeah, a lot of the boxes have, have, have a mixture of all of these things and coils and whatever, but, but that's getting into technicals and, and different people built different ones and they work for one person, maybe not for another. But just as we were hearing from previous speakers, you know, a lot of it is, is the person who's operating the instrument and, and how they focus and how they, uh, the intention and everything else. But anyway, the, the, so that's mm -hmm. where the general background. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <back>. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. It's still on. My understanding was that with machines with the black box, which is the out. Okay. Um, yeah, it isn't a matter of um, being connected up by wires to a uh, uh, physical energy source like electricity. It's, you know, you're sw switching these knobs around, but it's, it's, it's not like that. It's, it's, in a scientific sense, it's, it's not, there's not a, a, an energy source like that. 
Yeah, correct. So um, the way it works, I think Bogdan touched on it slightly, is that some of these machines have been developed to suit the style of the user. So there's a union, and if it's not working, um, the relationship with the person, and man and machine, or woman and machine, if that's not working, then there's a good chance the treatments won't be successful. And um, without that connectivity, it doesn't exist. Thank you. you know, it can't do anything. So um, if people are customizing or adapting, probably they're reworking the, 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 the original essence of what was produced way back. Um, they're now more aware of the fact that they can't just diagnose, they can also treat, because that was another phase, um, to find uh, an area of a body that's linked to a system, the Nardi, however, um, and then um, blame a miasm or, you know, or, or some energy centre for not being active or working. Um, it, it can be, it can get stuck the whole process if you can't take it through to conclusion and it can get very complex. So, yes. I don't really know much about this, but what I'm getting downloading really clearly is this isn't just a, a treatment for a particular thing in a particular person. But it's like there's something gone wrong in an area of the space-time continuum or the matrix or whatever you want to put in it. That that particular individual who perceives a disorder is picking up. And this is actually mending part of the universe, to put it in a simplistic mm. form, rather than fixing a specific thing mm. in a specific person. It's, it's doing something much bigger than that. Does that make sense? Or that works. Like no, that works for me. Um, if if we're yes, sorry, Paul. Paul, no, please. You, you haven't said. Well, uh, with these machines, you've got to be able to assess what you're actually treating: solid, liquid, or gas. And then, you, if it's not neither one of those, then you go into energy. If it's not one of those, you go into light. You go into physics and things like that. And these machines can work with everyone. Okay, can I hold for a minute on uh, the next question? Um, yes. Yeah, you said um, that you, you, they diagnose, but are they allowed to diagnose? Because we're not allowed to claim we've made a diagnosis. Um, I'm, I'm in a position to speak on behalf of the association and we have a school and we train people for four years through a set path and our um, assumption, right or wrong, is that there comes a point where the uh, person who's been training, if successful, um, they can then have a piece of equipment. And the most basic piece of equipment might be this is a DT10, um, which is very much like a calculator, but there's a place here for the witness. And... Um, this was designed by Tony Schofield, who's our sort of technical officer. If you read the journals, you'll see him. He's the editor of the magazine. Um, so we're uh, assuming that we've got the right. Um, we don't force people to come to us. They need to find us. And it was something I was just going to say about what Elizabeth said. We're not treating that many people. Because if we have 50 active, you know, sort of practitioners uh, in their spaces, they can only do so much. Yeah. So are you saying we, you don't advertise? We don't, uh, we don't have a marketing uh, budget or anything. Um, we have a very basic website. And if people find their way to radionics and then they stay with us for the duration of the course, they might find they're working like with one of these and then they'll have their technique and they'll find the piece of equipment that works for them. Everyone will be different. So we don't have a uniform... We've, we've, we have to teach a certain methodology. Um, yeah. Just to say, by treating with these m machines, I do not treat disease, I do not treat infections, <coughs> but I treat dis-ease. 
to remove the dis and increase ease. Yeah. And this is what this is what I do. Mm -hmm. This is this is you know oh you can't diagnose this. No, they come in and tell tell me where the thing is. But the reality is I've got to find out where the starting point is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's when you can look into mental, emotional, physical. You can also then, say it's a supportive therapy. Yes, absolutely. Without, you can't use the word treat or mm -hmm. cure or heal as long as you don't do it. But I often say I'll be stuck off one day because I'm a health professional and I break all the rules. I don't care. <laughs> but you can instead of treat, remove this disease. Uh, as I say, ev everyone will have their own way of working with this equipment. And if you put away that from your mind and you're just doing the work that you'd ordinarily do, those of you in the room that do healing and want to give your life energy to helping others, you will know that you, you become your own machine because you develop your technique. So a, a way of it, could, could I just explain a little more? A way of explaining that to you about me, if I'm involved, I'm not working with this equipment. Why am I here? What am I doing? Where did I come from? So I might say, I had a strange car accident. I had a lady come and put her hands on me. My spine was a bit twisted, high impact. Hit a London bus doing 90 miles an hour. Thought I was in a spaceship. Not really, but um, anyway, I couldn't stop the car in time to hit the bus. So my friends and I had a bit of a whack. And then I thought, oh, I've found out about radionics. And I found out about acupressure, nourishing my body slightly differently. Then thought I could be an osteopath. Then kids came along, couldn't really justify that financially. It was accepted at the British School of Osteopathy. Then I was selling vibrators. <laughs> uh, my grandfather used to sell vibrating beds. So... <laughs> He was a big chap. He'd carry the single bed into someone's house and they would have said, tick where it hurts. You know, it was great. And there was always these vibrating machines around the house and his chair vibrated and the footstool came up. I thought, acupressure, osteopathy, radionics, massage. Then, do you want to connect? We connected a little bit earlier. Then there are these energy centres. Hiroshi Motoyama... Institute of Religious Parapsychology in Japan makes a key machine. What's a key machine? Go to Exeter University, but, you know, put little things on the say points, measure your chakras. They're, whether they're alive, happening things. Um, a Shinto priest, but in a, an amazing space, in those beautiful book, Theories of Higher Consciousness. And uh, it just explains how the machine works. Then, moments in life, not enjoying myself. Uh, my friend says, go to this Ayurvedic clinic in Kotakal in Kerala. Amazing month there. Another friend says, go and do Aikido. Key Aikido. Mm -hmm. Completely relax. Think of your one point. Extend your mind. Have a light feeling. Life skills. What do you do with those? Sahaja Yoga, amazing. Am I the spirit? Am I my own master? Please may I have the divine knowledge. I am my own master. I am the spirit. I'm not guilty. I forgive everyone. All the energy centers and things that we work on. So I am radionic representative. If I'm not sat at a desk, I can't sit still doing this. I don't heal uh, mentally, I can do a bit of massage and manipulation, but I appreciate the wonder for those that discover and explore this because it, it is fascinating. Reading David Tansley, and a lot of these books are his, back in the 70s, these things, if he was here now, you would think that nothing has changed in all those 40, 50 years, because the terminology, the passion, the depth of it, Alice Bailey, 
you know, all, all the, the depth of it is just fascinating. So it's not just who's using what piece of equipment. There's something else going on. It's, it's a university of something which the kindness of it allows people to connect as well. So you're actually working with, you, you, you think of the person as your patient. That's not true. Someone, you just said that, you know, it's, there's more. There's more. Mm -hmm. It's an intelligence. ESP, it's the same thing you're doing with your pendulums and your dowsing rods. You know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not on for long, but I can tell you, if you go into radionics and you find anything, then you'll be pleased that you had a look. You know, um, Bogdan's a member of the association. Sorry, yes, questions? Yeah, the um, one point you've made about, about these machines, it is also about um, physical stuff. <coughs> That's the definite. I, my, my, I went to college at Honeywell, and uh, somebody had a burn in, on the cooker, and it was a bad burn. And the uh, and one of the practitioners said, "Has anybody got the remedy machine with them?" And they, they got it with them. And they put it on the desk, and they dialed up the appropriate uh, number mm -hmm. for a burn rate, oh. uh, which was Cantoris. Mm -hmm. So, and there are, there are two wells in this machine, and the, the lady put her finger in the well to, where the, the well that would receive, receive that signal, mm. and that burn pain vanished in seconds. Mm. So you can do physical, like you want to watch Arnica work, made on the machine yeah. with a very severe bruise. I've seen people come alive mm. just by the Arnica <coughs> made in the machine. Uh, homeopathies, Bogdan. Just add to that. See, there's, there's chronic and there's also the, um, the acute. And uh, just like. Um, Can you speak up? <coughs> there can be chronic illnesses and acute illnesses. So there's, John just mentioned something that's, that's acute, but uh, chronic illnesses, um, similar to what Lynn was talking about, where the, uh, the person has. Um, different um, elements of their whole psyche, the physical, the mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever, um, and their um, past traumas or whatever. So this isn't just, radionics isn't just a matter of, oh, I've got this and that, oh, I'll give you this, this problem. It's, there's a thorough analysis made using the pendulum and charts to find out where the worst um, which uh, uh, elements are uh, causing a particular issue, and bit by bit, it's drilled down in various various treatments, then um, it's uh, found to to help to alleviate the, uh, the, uh, the problems. That's all. So, so as I say, it's quite intricate. It's not just a matter of uh, uh, I'll, um, I'll use this opportunity just for a few minutes, if I can. Um, I, this, this was from a talk in 1975. Myisms. Um, may be classified under three major headings. The syphilitic comes to us by the courtesy of the Lemurian civilization, the tubercular from the Atlantean era, and the cancerous belongs to our present Aryan civilization. Um, the guy who wrote this... <coughs> Was, was getting to a point where it's very interesting, we've got these radionic cameras, we can take pictures of operations that are happening across the world, and we can see organs that are suffering, struggling, and they come to life in the frame. But again, it's the user of the camera equipment, the user of the equipment, it's the relationship that works. It's just not gonna work all the time. So it's, it's, it's quite a difficult, the, the genius is, so you do get historically, people who become a household name, but in our community, named people. Tansley and Malcolm Ray, more recent people, were 
in a fashion saying these machines are irrelevant because these things can be done and they've probably been done in ancient ways all before and the, and the, the thought processes and the, if it's an analysis or the feeling or the sensation of picking something up and that's not the intuitive side that's more just in the intelligence of working through it but the intuitive side is about the, the answers that you're looking for answers it's the puzzle, the answers that are going to help you decide about a way within your remit, a skill that you've got, that you can put it out there. So Tansley's talking about colour. They're talking about the chakras. They're saying, go to the chakras. Think about the miasms because they can deep seat and they can be very troublesome. But go to the chakras, balance the chakras. And a lot of what we do in the basic training is to just get people to douse where what's happening with the overactive, underactive, just find your way. And it's simple methodology that can be learned online courses in different ways, quite easily, I would say, just to learn to do this form of analysis. Um, some people can see people's energy centers, see colors, you know, there's all kinds of things. It all sits on the spine where there's these vortexes, I'm sure you all know this, <laughs> you know, which is great. So we, we have an affinity. I haven't got long. Um, is there anything you want to hear about that perhaps well, you did you'd talk, like you, to? You talk about the new, new innovations. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I'm trying to guide you through the fact that there will be an infinite variety of things. And Bogdan... Um, Paul will say, you know, people are putting it on their machines. People have got iPads now, but the problem is they're in parts of the world. They don't want it known in a widespread manner what they're doing because they're probably working in a sensitive field or something interrelated. You know, they've probably read about Tesla and all the famous people that have developed electronically and have a good understanding of, of, of that part, part of the spectrum. These are physical machines, they're empty. <laughs> but there's some great kit in there, but that was just to accentuate it. Um, well, I can, uh, I've got one with the back falling off. <laughs> this one. And I don't know. I mean, but, but inside, you know. A few wires. Yeah. A circuit board. And well, uh, no, there's no, <laughs> no, no, C, no, no PCB pollution or anything. But, you know, this, this is probably 70 years old, you know. You, can I just say something? You can get a witness, one of your own witness, hair sample, sputum or now. <laughs> get yourself a good crystal block. Find the crystal that you need to help you with the dilemma. Witness for the crystal, and then down, hours, days, weeks, how long you leave that there with your witness underneath. Because that, the crystal is also ready. Yeah. No offence, guys, but you can get all of this in one simple software on a computer. You don't That's the most modern one we've got. <laughs> just, I'm just looking at all of this and going, it's like, okay, it might work. But why have all of this when it gets software that does it now? It, it, again, it will be on any one day, if it worked for some one person and they choose to continue on and tune in with their piece of kit, it's time and space only operative for them because someone else might not kick in. So the real people that are holding it together, the glue that develops it taking forward, are going to find a unique proposition which is only unique to them. So one person would design it on an iPad, we've got that. Then he shows some disinterest, doesn't develop it any further. It's temporary in, in place and time. So it just stops there. Each of these things are historic in a fashion because they represent their era, you know, with Texas Instruments, <laughs> whatever it is. But that's where we're at. So it is a continual development. There, there's no... Uh, stop, stop to it. Every device. Is that yes. Can you put a 
something? You can put a little hair sample on there um, to do uh, an analysis. And then if you want to do a treatment, you set the rates uh, for that person, for the rates according to... That's where you put the witness. They call it the witness. Yes, that's, that represents the person you're working with, yes. trying to, um, if, if they'll let you, balance them, um, try to find any, any sort of problems they might be having where they're out of kilter, let's say. We're trying to treat their etheric field. Mm. You, know, you, you will hear practitioners talk about the detail of dealing with particular parts of their body and their systems. I think that was 25 quid or something. <laughs> One minute. Can I, can I, sorry. Yes. If, te- if you're teaching people, they're not going to go out and obtain all of this. So what I'm saying is once you've taught them... What's the modern equivalent? You know, what, because, well, uh, DT10, I think it's called, uh, that we currently use. But they have, to, they have to work. They can't have a, it says in our rule book, you can't have a piece of equipment just because you rock up. Because we don't want people saying that they know what they're doing because it's highly risky to go around saying, oh, yeah, I've got one of these, I can do anything. No, you know, it's a thorough, really careful training. But, what, but that's what I'm saying, once you've trained them, at, at a point in time, we will recommend a tried and tested piece of equipment. That, that, but they probably won't get that. They'll get something that they'll fall into. They'll fall into their own space to do with the technology that works. Yes. Yeah, just to alter the, the level of thinking for a minute. Please. 30 years ago, maybe longer, I did my first dowsing course. And toward the end of that, there was some radionics training. And the thing that really sold it for me was there was an aerial photograph of a crop in the prairies in America when it hadn't been sown very long. And they cut a piece of the photograph out in irregular shape and put that on the witness and treated that with insecticide and fertilizer frequencies. And six months later, photographed the field again. And boy, did that stand out. It really shocked me. And we're not talking about people now. Mm -hmm. We're talking about... Whatever atoms are made of and Yeah, we do soil, soil and crop courses, yeah. we do small animals, we do horses, large, um, yes. <laughs> Elizabeth, yes. Yeah. To, to remind of us the bleeding obvious is the reason why this is... Your language. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, because the, the world or, you know, what system we're living in reduces everything to one of the lowest forms of energy, which is money. And the petrochemical and pharmaceutical mm. industry finance what we call science. Yeah. And they publish <laughs> stuff that agrees with the lowest common denominator mm. of energy. Yeah. right? And the reason why people laugh about this and don't understand it is because they don't understand that we're actually all magicians. Mm. And we're actually all time lords in our own way at various stages of mm. evolution. Mm-hmm. And there is nothing outlandish or weird about this. This is normality. Mm-hmm. It's swallowing chemicals and putting chemicals on your plants and expecting to get a good result. Mm-hmm. This is outlandish and weird. Yeah. Yes. Right, so uh, two more questions, I think. Um, oh, three? Three more questions. Three. Question one. Just that thing on the crystal and put your sample under the crystal. Mm-hmm. Look for the right surface because you might need some soil from the garden. You might need to put it on some wood or some cloth or some paper. The surface has also got to be right yeah. because your witness is under the crystal and the surface has got to be right. And you're in between the surface and the crystal. Mm-hmm. And it actually works on it. Okay, Lynn. Mm-hmm. So does the oldest one work as well as the newest one? <laughs> um, the, the very oldest one, um, you know, uh, strangely, I've got a box out there, which is similar to this, and it won't open. It, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> it's stuck. The lock's stuck. I know stuck. we might say this is the newest one. But absolutely. 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 Work. This, the, the lady who developed this, Ruth, she developed the sticking method. So, yeah. if um, you know, there's a way of... Being working with the machine and this one is you're asking a question if, if it gives you the answer that you're going to need then your finger sticks um, this one's the same from a similar era and that was a part of so if you want to use that technique 
then there are people who know and use these machines who've got them sat at home. So they don't, we, we do sell them. We, re, we, re, we put them back out there on the market. It's just that I've got all these because we were donated. Um, Murray Denning gave us, um, his granddaughter gave us, or his daughter had all the stuff and he wrote this amazing book. And, and then all the butcher instruments, they're quite legendary because you know, you, he shows you exactly why he made them like this. Um, it's all in the books, you know. Who comes up with the rates numbers? Like? That's been established over time. The early rates were done, um, perhaps with homeopathy in mind. Different analysis. Yeah, and different people add to the rate system all the time. Um, colour rates are very important. That's, I'm very keen to see people using colour for uh, helping energy uh, chakra things, you know, because of the... You just have to read some of the literature to think about it. The base chakra is underutilized in most people, you know, to, to, to start helping people with color. Mm -hmm. It's a very, um, there's, a, there's a big innocence to that as well because the communication between yourself and the recipient, if, if you're thinking of them as a patient, is very clear the, you know, the, for them to think, think red. Why would I? Okay, that's simple. Yeah. Yeah. You're not yeah. confusing them. And, and, I'm not saying simplicity is great, you know, because we've got thousands of rates, thousands and thousands. And there, there are rates for the Australian uh, rem flower remedies, you know, there are rates for everything. They're constantly, all the bark remedies, they're constantly making sure that all the rates books are kept up to date. So you can give any... So if there's a number, it's got four numbers, isn't it, a rate, for example? Seven, 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 so if I knew what that number was, What's the difference between using a machine and me saying, put that number into a Well, you've answered, the, you've answered the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if, if you were... <laughs> but rate, no, rates, rates um, are widely accepted. Um, Malcolm Ray is responsible for that. And if you read about him and rates, and then if you want to contact the association, we, we sell rate cars and things like that. Um, you, you, if you believe that that's a good way forward for you, it'd be very difficult to get all the homeopathic remedies in, and all the, the therapies into your, your workspace and then to give them. So um, these potentizers, Malcolm Ray did, you know, you can, you can potentize. So you can put a basic um, homeopathic pill in there with no treatment on it. And, and then you can make it into aconite or pulsatilla or so. You can make it for the purposes of giving it as a treatment and you set the rates. You know, it's, it's fantastic. Can I please throw a final spanner in the works? It won't be a spanner for me, so you can, never, you can have your own fun. <laughs> this is one that works, I promise you. You get a piece of paper, use a circle, and within that circle, an equal, equal, equal angular triangle. Yeah. Write the rate number there, the, the remedy name and the potency, mm -hmm. yeah. and put your bottle of water or pill yes. in that triangle, and you will get better. Yep, yep. I promise you. Yep, I, I would agree with that. <laughs> okay, um, is there anyone who's not spoken who feels they have something they want to ask or say? Because it's not just about why I'm here. I want to say thank you anyway, because uh, I, I hope to see you again. Um, I'm enjoying myself being here. It's lovely. I came to your conference at the race course a couple of years ago, and uh, I, I, love, I love what you all represent, you know, and how we have an affinity. So if, if we keep that up. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> all right, lovely. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. That was yeah, no, good fun. <laughs> And your, your, you know, your passion came across in your, in your presentation. We really, we really thank you as well. Uh, delighted. Yep. Um,